Hey guys, Mario Peshev here and our community manager from Devrix Mara. Today's topic is the importance of uh, learning, continuous learning, creating, perceiving new information, following new topics for web developers and other people in the IT industry. So here's the thing, as a web developer, you do want to progress, you know, growing uh, career terms or anything along those lines in terms of, again, growing as a professional in the industry. Uh, however, the only kind of feasible way to do that is to continuously learn new things and practice and experiment and, and have the opportunity to kind of leverage new technology, stacks, frameworks, whatever it is. Even if you kind of work in the same kind of niche or industry, you still need to kind of stay up to date with the latest updates in the IT world and in uh, software development, web development, whatever it is that you do on a daily basis. Uh, here's why. So. As a web developer again, or web designer, software engineer, backend developer, DevOps person, you can join a company and stay there for the next 10 or 15 years, which is somewhat fine. You know, there, there are different uh, kind of uh, arguments with regards to job hopping, pros and cons. I have recorded a video for that uh, separately, uh, discussing the negatives of job hopping when it comes to looking for a stable career in the long run. But eventually you need to kind of start a job and, and start working there. But there are kind of two different ways that this could shape out. The first one is just start a job, expect for tasks on, tasks on a daily basis, uh, kind of rely on your project managers and team leaders to uh, give you each and every single asset required for a specific project, you know, kind of having an established process, specific things that you're supposed to do anyways, and so on and so on, uh, which is somewhat fine. But the problem is that working in, a, in an organization is a teamwork. Uh, even if you happen to work in a company that doesn't really depend on teamwork that much, it's still a teamwork. You need to, uh, again, discuss stuff with your QAs, with your other fellow developers, your direct team leader, project major, sometimes the CEO or the CTO, whoever it is on, on the team, that's kind of shaping the requirements for the development process itself. And unless you're able to kind of contribute to kind of bring some new fresh ideas for improvement, you're expecting that other people are spending that time for you. And why is that? Almost no organization has some sort of an R&D role, someone that's heavily involved in spending half of their time or even more uh, doing you know, due diligence and, and researching new frameworks, new tools, new libraries, approaches, uh, keeping up to speed with the latest, say, versions of a programming language or engines for a you know SQL server or whatever it is pretty much uh, which kind of leads to leads to some sort of stagnation kind of leads to a, a, a steady flow of doing the same thing over and over and over again without leveraging the progress and the innovation being introduced in new technologies which obviously is a problem so the, the thing is, we've led several interviews over the past couple of weeks and essentially over the past six months, a lot of different interviews with software engineers. And uh, one of our favorite questions during interviews is, what sources do you read that kind of inform you for what's happening in the technical universe? You know, magazines, blogs, forums, newsletters, anything along those lines. Guess what? Almost everyone on our interview said, well, I'm reading Facebook or LinkedIn. And some people said, well, I'm reading Stack Overflow. And my follow-up is, do you really have Stack Overflow as, you know, your bookmark and your kind of starting tab when you open your browser, like the first thing that you see there and just scroll random questions here and there? No? Um, and, and that's essentially a problem. Like, we know how much innovation has gotten into DevOps and especially in front-end development, actually. You know, we have Angular, we do have, uh, you know, React, Vue.js, Ember, tons of different other libraries. We do have um, Node.js with tons of different web stacks like the mean stack and others that let you create server-side applications through JavaScript, managing process with PM2 and whatnot. Even if you're not kind of working as a full-time JavaScript developer or kind of a Node engineer or whatever it is, you may still have to leverage those services, you know, kind of uh, have to set up a slab, Slack bot which runs on Node or some sort of a web service that tracks something or a monitoring service or anything along along those lines that's doing that. Or again, if you're a front-end developer, you may have to introduce 
a new templating engine like for example i don't know mustache or handlebars anything that that kind of improves your front-end process along the way or if you use again react you still have to combine it with tons of different components in order to to make routing work and you know persistent storage and uh, dealing with the virtual dom or anything that happens in the industry so if you expect that other people are going to teach you that and always give you the best practices you're doing it wrong you have to so it's again it's about information and it's about influence right so the the problem with for example with political candidates and the fact that some some politicians get elected even though they don't have the right uh, attitude or whatever is that people are misinformed they don't track the election campaigns they don't they don't track the uh, they don't monitor the track record of a political candidate across the years or their business success or whatever it is. So they're misinformed. They only rely on TV appearances and, and presentations and kind of TV shows to outline what does a candidate have and, and you know, what, what what's their general goal for something. But the, again, that happens due to the lack of information. And same goes in a, in a corporate environment. If you rely on your colleagues or your project major, uh, major or team leader or CTO to tell you those are the best practices, then you're risking you know, the opportunity for them to not really know what the best practice is and what's the best way to accomplish something. While on the other hand, if you do the due diligence yourself, you may say, well, look, I read about this on, I don't know, Slashdot or DZone or Hacker News or whatever. And, and, and I think that it's something that we can use. And if it's a, sh a small fix, like something that you can incorporate in four hours or something, you can do that, you know, after hours and just show them how to do that, right? You may find a way to, uh, work better with GitHub or find a better way to deploy something or a way to, you know, do some browser caching for, uh, you know, visiting your kind of viewing your website offline or, or anything along those lines. You know, there's again a lot of innovation happening out there. Uh, that could be gathered through different sources, right? There are specific blogs and magazines for certain technologies or generally IT as a whole. Uh, there are certain blogs and again magazines for you know, performance, for security, for stability, things like that. There are tons of books that combine the knowledge of a lot of other people in the industry. There are, again, sites as Quora where you can follow some of those top consultants and people who have actually invented technologies over the years, uh, follow their blogs, of course, and so on. So uh, you just need to, to kind of maintain, you know, a Feedly account or, or something that, or kind of a newsletter that keeps you up to date with the latest happenings in IT. So there's uh, something that I read recently, the, the most successful people in the world, you know, the Elon Musk's and Warren Buffett's and Bill Gates and so forth. Like Bill Gates is said to, to read over 50 books a year. And, and kind of the general rule of thumb is, is spending kind of five hours a week, you know, an hour a day on reading, right? And, and even if you even if you limit that to just a couple hours a week or so, you can still read a ton of valuable information for your industry, right? You can do it on your way back to uh, back from work. You can listen to podcasts, for example, in the car, or or just read blogs uh, before you you know go to bed or on Saturdays or something like that. But just keep yourself up to speed with technologies because otherwise you may miss on a lot of great opportunities. And this is a way to show your motivation, your, uh, you know, willingness to develop as an IT expert in your specific field. This is a way to get, uh, you know, more exciting things done and research new technologies and make sure you're up to speed with whatever's happening and find new job opportunities or new ways to grow in your career, right? As a senior developer, as a team lead, as a VP of engineering, as a CTO or someone else, or a senior consultant or anything along those lines. So again, my top advice for any, each and every single uh, person in IT right now is just make sure you allocate some time and subscribe for some resources that teach you technology. Resources that talk about what's the latest and greatest in the, uh, you know, software development and engineering world, new technologies, new ways to implement something, new versions of software, programming languages, frameworks, what do they introduce, why do they do that, and so forth. And yeah, Stack Overflow is great, it's just not your go-to place to read something. And again, don't, for, don't forget books. Books 
are immensely helpful and there are tons of books like you know the Gango 4 or Modern Architecture or Test Driven Development, a lot of other different books that will change your perspective for development uh, forever. Uh, probably my top pick is going to be the Pragmatic Developer, again from the Pragmatic Bookshelf, but again there are lots lots and lots and lots of books. Just make sure, make sure you find at least a couple hours a week on learning and you're never going to regret until the rest of your life.